Hello, math makers. Thank you for joining me again for another lesson on identifying and counting money. This time we are moving into word problems because there's no doubt you're going to be solving money word problems. So I want to make sure you understand what to do when you have a money word problem. And if you've been around for a little while, you know that when we solve word problems with, with word problems in general, we use the cubes method. Now the cubes method, in case you've forgotten, um, there are a number of videos on the channel about that. You can go back and review them. But there are different steps for each thing. And if we go through each of those steps, it sets us up and prepares us to be able to answer, to get the right answer. So let's go over cubes real quick. C is circle the numbers. You can read it with me if you know. U, underline the question. B, box the keywords. E, Eliminate extra information if there is any. And S, solve, label, and check your work. So I want to make sure we remember that. And of course, I'll have it on the screen while we're solving them just like I did last time. Um, also, I want to make sure that we remember our money terms because we're still going to be dealing with coins and not really dollar bills yet. So coins, of course, are money that is made out of metal, has different values. We have different kinds of coins. And then we have cents, which is the value of a coin. How much is it worth? Since we're going to be getting into word problems, I do want to make sure I go over our <clears throat> addition and subtraction terms because we might be using some of them today. Um, our addition terms, the two numbers we're adding are called add-ins. The answer to an addition problem is called the sum, sometimes a total, but usually a sum. And the whole problem together is called an equation. And because we're doing word problems, there are some keywords that kind of give us some clues as to what we do, add or subtract. So these are some of the ones for addition. We have, read them with me, in all, all, all together, together, sum, total, total number, increased by, plus, combined, added to. If you see any of those in a word problem, it's probably an addition word problem. Now, those are not the only clues you have. There are some others, but these are the ones that we see the most. Next, we have our subtraction terms to know. We know that when we subtract, when we have a subtraction problem, the first number, the larger number, is usually called the menu end. The number that we're subtracting is called the subtrahend. And the answer to a subtraction question is called the difference because it's the difference between these two numbers. We put it all together, just like for addition, it's called an equation. Now, with word problems, the keywords for subtraction are a little bit different. Read these with me. I know we've gone over them before, but go ahead and read them with me, please. Difference, less than, take away minus, fewer, left over, or have left, remain, minus, how many more? If you see any of those key words in a subtraction question, or in a word problem, it's probably a subtraction question. All right, we're going to do one more review of our coins that we're going to be looking at today. We have our first coin. What is that? It's a dime. How much is a dime worth? Ten cents. Our next coin here, it's a penny. And how much is a penny worth? One cent. What's our next coin? It's a nickel. And how much is a nickel worth? Five cents. We have this coin up on top. What is that? It's a half dollar. How much is a half dollar worth? 50 cents. And then we have our last coin here. And what is this? It's a quarter. And how much is a quarter worth? 25 cents. And last, which we won't be using today at all, but go ahead and let's go ahead and make sure we know it. It is what? A $1 bill. And how much is a $1 bill worth? $1. That's right. All right, let's get started. We're going to go through the whole process. Um, let's read this with me. Jason went to the store. He bought two pieces of candy for 23 cents. He pays 
with two dimes and a nickel. How much change does he have left? So what's step one? Circle the numbers. What are the numbers? It's a little bit trickier with money questions, I will tell you. So our numbers are 23 cents, of course, and then I've got these two here because these are coins that are worth numbers. It's a little tricky. So when you see a money word problem, um, look for those things that are coins because coins are worth cents and cents is expressed in numbers. Um, our next one is you. What does you mean? Underline the question. What is the question? Can you find it? All right, look for that question mark. Go back to the beginning of the sentence. <clears throat> How much change does he have left? Remember, don't stop here. Keep going till you see that capital letter, the first word of the sentence, and that lets you know. If you see a period there, you know that's the first word. What's the next step? B. That's right. B is what? Box the keywords. Do you see any keywords in this one? Have left. Now, do you remember what have left means? Is that add or subtract? We can go back and check. Do you see have left anywhere on here? I see it right here. If it's on this side, what is it? Adding or subtracting? Subtraction, that's right. So we know that we're going to be subtracting. That already put that in our head. You remember that. Is there any, we're on E now, that's right. E is eliminate extra information. Is there any information in here that doesn't help us solve the question? Because we want to get rid of that so it doesn't distract us. Jason went to the store. That doesn't help us solve the question. We want to take that out. And our last step is S, solve and check our work. So the first thing we need to do before we can solve and check our work we circled two things up here that are worth numbers, but we don't know what those numbers are yet. We know that we have two dimes and one nickel. And when we figure out how much that is, we need to add those together. So dimes are worth 10 cents each, so we're going to have to add 10 plus 10. We just have one nickel, so that's going to be a 5. We know that 10 plus 10 is 20, so two dimes are worth 20 cents, one nickel is worth 5 cents. We know he gave them all that. We still don't know how much this is worth. So we're going to have to add the 20 cents and the 5 cents, and we get 25 cents. So he gave the person 25 cents to pay. Now we can subtract. We're going to subtract 25 minus, what's the other number? 23. Okay, so we have 25 cents minus 23 cents. We're going to use our break apart model because I find that's probably the easiest way to do it, especially in our head. We break up 23. We're going to get 23, and we're going to subtract the 20 first, and we're going to subtract it from 25. So we're going to do 25 minus 20. That's how many tens? Two. That's right. There's two tens and 20. So we're going to go up the hundreds chart twice from 25 to 15 to 5. That's right. 25 minus 20 is 5. We've subtracted our 20. Now we have to subtract what? Our 3. So we're going to start where we left off. We left off at 5. So we're going to subtract 5 minus 3. We can count backwards 3 times. You probably know this already. We're going to subtract 3 times. We're going to go 4, 3, 2. So 5 minus 3 is 2 cents. That's everything. So he has 2 cents left. And we're going to put that in our sentence. Jason has two cents left. How was that? All right, let's try another one. You know, I always try to do at least three just to make sure we're getting used to it. We have another question. Naraya had 20 cents in her purse. She found three nickels and her cousin gave her two quarters. How much does Naraya have in all? So we know that first step is what? C. That's right. Circle the numbers. What are the numbers? Remember, it's a little bit trickier with money. What would I circle? That's right. I would circle 20 cents, three nickels, and two quarters because those are going to be worth numbers in a minute. Next step is you underline the question. <clears throat> what is the question? 
how much does Neriah have in all? So that's what we're trying to figure out. Next is B. B is box the keywords. Do you see any keywords in there? In all. Now, what does in all tell us to do? Add or subtract. Let's check our chart again. Do you see in all anywhere? I do. I see it up here. I'm sure you saw it too. So what does that mean? Add or subtract? Add. That's right. So we know that we're going to be adding. E is for eliminate any extra information. Do you see any, any extra information in this one? I don't see anything extra. So there's nothing to eliminate. So last is going to be solve and check our work. Now, because we have coins again, we can't solve we can't add until we know what all these coins are worth. So we know she has three nickels and two quarters. We know that nickels are worth five cents each. So we're going to add it three times. Five plus five plus five. Five plus five we know is ten. Ten plus five is fifteen cents. That's right. And two quarters, and we did this in our last video, three, we know that two quarters, 25 plus 25 equals what? 50 cents. So we still don't know how much she's gotten yet. So we're going to have to add 50 plus 15 because she found 15 and her cousin gave her uh, 50. So we have to add those up, 50 plus 15. We're going to add 10, make that 60, add 5 be 65. Now we can add. So we're going to add 65 plus 20. Well, the neat thing is on break apart, there's nothing to break apart because we don't have any ones. So we're just going to add 65 plus 20. So that's going to be two jumps because there's two tens in 20. So we're adding, so we're going down the hundreds chart in our mind. 65, we go down to 110. 75, one more 10. 85. So we know that she's got 85 cents. And if we're going to label it, we need to have our sentence. Nariah has 85 cents in her purse. All right, let's do one more for practice. <clears throat> Christopher bought a comic book that cost 53 cents. He gave them three quarters to pay for it. How much change did he have left over? So again, C is circle the numbers. What are the numbers? 53 and 3 quarters. I'm sure you found those already. U is underline the question. What's the question? How much change did he have left over? B is box the keywords. Do you see any keywords? Left over. Left over. Of course, we'll go back in a minute and check that and see what left over stands for. We should know that already. Um, do we have any extra information? Not really. So we're going to go to solve and check the work. We know that we have three quarters, and quarters are worth 25 cents each. That might be difficult to do in our head, but if I'm going to thinking about my tens and my fives, I know that three, if I add 20 plus 20, it's 40 plus 20 is 60. That's just counting tens. That's two, four, six tens. So that's 60. And if I add <clears throat> my three fives, that's 15. So 60, um, so I add again, 20 plus 20 plus 20, 60, 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's counting by fives, 5, 10, 15, 15. So 60 plus 15 would be 75. So what am I going to add? So that's how much he gave them. Leftover means we subtract. So we're going to subtract 75 minus 53. Again, I'm going to use break apart. If I break apart 53, I get 53. I'm going to subtract 50 first. 75 minus 50. How many tens are in 50? Five. That's right. Because that first number, that tens place. And we sub so we're going to jump 10 times. So we're going to 75. We're going to go up the hundreds chart in our head. We're going to do it five times. 65, 55, 45, 35, and 
25. So I've subtracted my 50. Now I'm going to subtract 3. 25 minus 3, I count backwards three times. Starting at 25, 24, 22. So I'm going to land on 22 cents, and Christopher has 22 cents left. This video is a little bit longer. <clears throat> Thank you for sticking through <clears throat> until the very end. Again, the practice is what makes this easier, and that's what I want for us all to make it where we can do this easily. Thank you for sticking around. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day.